Hey guys, Mike, Iron Trap Garage, and today is an exciting day. Uh, Matt got his last engine finished up on the run stand, and it's time to take mine there. So I'm going to work on taking a few things off, loading the engine in my truck, taking it to the shop, putting it on the run stand. Uh, Steve's going to take a day and just button some things up uh, while I'm at the warehouse, and we're going to try and get running. Um, I'm actually going to be pulling the aluminum intake off, and we have a stock intake manifold at the shop with a good holly carburetor on it that we know that we start like every engine with um, so we're going to put that on first just make sure everything's working as it should then we'll put this back on with my 297s i have a linkage set up for it somewhere in my mess over here i'll pull out and then we'll run it with that um, so let's get to work button up a few things pull a few things off get in my truck get to the shop so let's get started Come here. Hi. Hey, look up there. Come here. Come here. Hey, look up here. Look at that right there. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. What are you doing? Putting the engine in my truck. Why? Can you say hi to the people of YouTube? Push down, ready? Push. Ugh. All right, hold on, hold on. You gotta go all the way up. Now push. Ugh. All the way up. Push. Toast. Yeah, she's chewing on. Ugh. Ready? Yeah. Watch your toes. Okay, go up more. Pump it. Push it in all the way. There you go. Pump. Do you need some help? Oop. Hold up right there. Nate helped me load the engine last night. Nice. <laughs> oh, look at that. You have safety wired it. Yes, I did. You the man. Safety wired everything else. You the man. It's not very tight. But Is that why it took two years? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is the reason. <laughs> I still get a bunch of balls. There you go. Well, I have those uh, chrome organizers I'm going to use eventually. Yeah, are they too thick? No, I don't know. I think they are. They might be like 6 millimeter wires. Okay. All right, so Steve, uh, while I had to run out, Steve went and bolted on all the doodads to make this thing run. So much like we do with a lot of our test engines or first time firing, and we have this stock intake with a stock holly that um, is known good and um, we usually throw that on there for now. Mike mentioned in another video before anybody screams, he threw these heads on because he was waiting on some uh, parts from, I think h and H. I don't remember, but basically he's getting finned heads for this, but for now he wanted to just get the engine moving. I've been bugging him to get this thing going. He's been stalling, now's the time. 
He's busy with picking up uh, auction people are picking up parts today. So he gave us the go ahead to at least check spark, maybe see if we can make it fire. It's like he's the boss now. You, you peons make my engine run while I'm doing important things. So here we are, we're the peons. But anyways, we're gonna make this thing hopefully run. We're gonna first check for spark. Um, he did a Petronics conversion as you guys may remember. So we got our little spark plug here with jumper wire and uh, we're gonna crank it over, see if we have spark and then we will um, get fuel to it and maybe, fingers crossed, it will run and we can tell Mike the good news. <laughs> all right, we are gonna check for spark first. Mike just showed up, so he gets to actually hey see all this. No, go ahead. We're no. checking for spark, he yeah. can try this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we got, got spark. spark. Time to make fire. Ooh. There it goes. Let's get a light here. Keep it there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Give her a crank. Ha ha ha! She's gonna run. I did it right. Yeah, you did. Well, I'll hold on. <laughs> We got this thing all adjusted for that rowdy engine. Oh, right. That's it. Yep. That's all right, so you're happy. Yeah, it made noise. I didn't totally mess everything up. It's, <laughs> it was timed correctly yeah. and it yeah. fired off. I was very, the timing thing was a little funky. There was no mark on the crank gear, so I had to do some thinking and I got it right. So pull this intake off. We're going to stick my aluminum intake with the dual 97s on it and try and get it running better. The mixture screws on this one, Matt and Steve were fiddling around with her off a little bit. So instead of spending the time to get this one right, we're just gonna put my 297s that Steve rebuilt on and uh, get it running on that and fill this with water and get it to run for 20 or so minutes. So a little bit of work to do and then we'll be back at it. Mike had to leave, so we're gonna keep playing. That's a good end of the week. All right, so we got everything hooked up on a run stand here. Um, last time, one thing we noticed is that the water pumps were squealing. One of them at least was. Um, this engine, for anybody that doesn't remember, Mike got this from a guy that had a video of it running, supposedly it was rebuilt, et cetera, et cetera. Mike sold on that whole story. But uh, either way, he left the water pumps on it that were on it. Um, so one of them may or may not with some uh, Steve's patented heat cycles may stop squealing, but if you hear some squealing, that's probably what it is. We're hoping it goes away. Mike's going to have to take his pumps off and uh, put some sealer and stuff on them. He did not tighten them up, 
So when Steve and I added water to it, it just started, all the bolts were just like finger tight and it started pouring water out. One of the bolts, for anybody that doesn't know, is hidden in the water, the lower uh, water port here. So we'd have to pull it off and drain like five gallons of water, which we're not doing. So we're gonna run it, and even though it's dripping, don't mind that, that's just because uh, we're working around something that Mike didn't do. We had to give him hell in the video. So I'm gonna fire this up, let it run, put the timer on, and uh, see how it does. Oh, that's cool. Yep, there we go. Ready? Yep. Oh, I grabbed this rod and set it. <laughs> I was wondering why we we're going to the moon there. It's been running for about 10 or 11 minutes or something like that. Um, staying nice and cool. So, this is like the coolest running engine we've possibly ever had. It, it just, well, given we had the fan running, so it's gonna help a little bit, but 15 minutes, it didn't even get up over 150 yet. So this thing is running extremely cool, which is good, but the worrying thing we're having is, and I tried to show it while I was running, we had one other engine that did this, and the whole time it was running, there was water. Oh. oh. Wow, you see that literally water's running out of the exhaust and dripping after we shut it off. Not good, not good. So while it's running cool, the last one we had that was like that, I'm trying to get a good shot, but it's not, it's really hard to get here. There you go. That exhaust should not be dripping water. That's a problem. So the last one we've had like that, this center exhaust port was cracked in the exhaust port because flatheads, the cooling system pretty much surrounds that center uh, port. And if somebody leaves water in it over time uh, in the winter, they can crack and they will tend to leak. And this is one of the problems we have with people, a lot of times when they're selling engines, they're just like, oh yeah, I fired it on the ground. This one runs fantastic except for that little thing. So we're gonna have to take a look, see what's causing that. Um, maybe, fingers crossed, maybe the heads need to be retorqued and it's just, you know, but I, I kind of doubt it. So we're gonna have to look in there, see what's going on. We haven't called Mike with the news yet, but it did run really cool. So beautiful. <laughs> uh, we'll have to make a decision from there, but that's leaking pretty good. I mean, you could see, you can see, it's dripping steadily it's now. It's leaking as much as the water pump. Yeah, it's leaking pretty good. So we're gonna have to take this manifold off and inspect a little further and see what's up. Oh, that did it. That Front one. Tour. See it Is run. it leaking through the ex Does that bolt go through into the... No. The, the center bolt? Yeah. That one? No, that's down into here. It only goes right into there. Oh, I just had I just had a momentary glimpse of the bolt there. I, I can't... Like no, the coolant system and the, and the... No, they shouldn't... It's, it's right. leaking. It's leaking pretty bad. Yeah. That's actually worse than that other one we had. Because yep. the other one was it would sit overnight and you would start to see it. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, well, we made the sad phone call to Mike at the warehouse and told him his situation with his engine. Um, luckily, like always, we had a spare engine sitting. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, we went to Virginia and bought a bunch of stuff and we bought a 37 engine that was in really good shape. We think it might have been gone through or rebuilt at some point in its life. And it's basically the same engine as what Mike had. We don't know what the inside as far as the cam and the and the lifters and all that stuff goes. Um, but Mike obviously has new stuff in here. So we're gonna start blowing this thing apart because it is still leaking that fast out of it. So the crack is actually like up inside and around the curve of the casting. Um, it is cracked, so I couldn't even get in there to weld it because it's cracked up around it and there's really no way until we get some sort of laser robotic welding to go in and fix flathead blocks or out of luck. So this engine would be a great engine for somebody to run in like a little dragster or something or a car that just was doing track time um, and run no coolant in it and just run the engine, maybe fill it with cement like the racers used to do or just run it with no coolant. Um, it would be totally fine, but Obviously, you can't run it in a street car that you actually need coolant and drive around. So we're going to start blowing this engine all apart and uh, scavenge the parts that Mike put on here that are new and whatever we can. And Mike's going to be bringing that other engine back and fingers crossed we can have something that looks just like this, sounds just like this, runs as well as this, but doesn't leak water out of the effing exhaust port. So, yeah. Back to drawing board. Did we miss a bolt? No, 
I just look at that. There it goes. Yeah, Ah, they're yes. adjustable. The inside of that engine. God damn it. Are they split valve guides? No, this is all... You just... Anywhere. <laughs> no. Dude, this you thing can start is... your own file with that one. Dude, that thing is fresh. That thing is freaking you beautiful. Mother... Tell me how much you want for it. I will gladly pay you for it. It's not the money. It's the principal. I know. We're going to get a 37 Ford or a 36 Ford, like, next month. And like, man, if only we had an engine. Come on, baby. Maybe you have to choke both of them a little bit. Yeah. You try opening the throttle blades a little bit. Have at it. Trying to get it to go. Just let it idle.
<laughs> yeah, great. Stinky. Stinky, stinky. All right, so that was an expensive lesson that I learned. Um, I should know better, but uh, that old engine is totally junk. Uh, it could be used for a race car if anyone's looking for a good running flathead that can have water in it. Uh, I have a 21 stud that'll be perfect for you. Um, but we got this thing running. Um, we know it runs cool. Steve hooked a radiator up to it a while ago and ran it with water. So uh, now we're going to take it off of this and in the next video we're going to work on putting it into the car. So thanks everyone for watching and hopefully you learned from my foolish mistake. Thanks guys. Catch you later.